Everything I got's yours. Everything you got's mine. No, what what's mine is mine. <laughs> what's yours is mine. <laughs> well, no, it's not, it's not true. <laughs> Amen. <laughs>
and long life. And that's, long life. That's the verse. True humility leads to riches, honor, and long life. So, but true humility is not false humility. Right. False humility is saying, well, I'm just, you know, no good sinner and, you know, saved by grace, whatever. And I really don't need to have a lot of stuff. I just need enough just for myself to get by. You know, that's, what are they doing? Focusing on their self. Right. So that's not, that's not true humility. Right. And people think that that's being humble of, you know, not looking at myself like high-minded, not looking at myself as being wealthy. Not, it's, it's not, it's false. That's why I love it. It says true humility. Right. <laughs> true humility is getting your attention off yourself and onto Christ. And I know somebody needed to hear that. So Amen. Again, that great there. exchange. It's not about you changing. It's about the great exchange, which is the blessings of Abraham, which you're seated on high. You're jointly together, seated on high, all things under your feet. Where are we going now? Verse 2. <laughs> <laughs> and these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if you shall hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So check this out. This is what overtake means in the Hebrew. It says, take over your life, overwhelm you, engulf you, pile up on you, cover you over, and load you up with an excessive amount, an avalanche, a heap, a swamp, an overflow, a flood. <laughs> that's good. Take me now, Lord, take me now. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's, overtake that's overtaking you. That reminds me of uh, Matthew 6. You know, says, so seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things shall be shall added, added, added on to you or right. come on to you. And what is it talking about before that? It's like, I know that you have need for food. I know that you have need for clothing. I know you have need for all these things. Right. Like, God knows we need all these things to live here, but he's saying, don't focus on those things. Don't focus on that stuff. It's, focus focus on me. Focus on knowing that I am that provider for those things. And when you seek first the kingdom, he says, all these things will be added to be you. Added onto you, just like right. this is saying here that you know they're going to come on you and overtake you. They're going to flood you. And hey, you know what? We're all in this together, taking the attention off of everything else and putting it onto Christ. This is what we call spiritual exercise: knowing your promises, sitting at the feet, receiving. It's like that, Martha, Martha. You are worried and troubled about many That's things. Right. Only one thing is needful. <laughs> only one thing. If you think about that, only one thing is needful: sitting at the feet. So if you are sitting at the feet right now, you are doing the one thing that Amen. is needful. Amen. Amen. So let's move on to uh, verse 3. Blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the field. It means you're going to be blessed wherever you're at, basically. So you think, like, we live in the city. We're blessed here. If we moved out to the country, though, on a farm, we'd still be blessed. Or if you lived in the desert, or if you lived at the beach, or whatever, it doesn't matter where you live at, right. you're going to be blessed with what this is basically saying, right. in the city or out of the city, it doesn't matter. And a lot of times, I think sometimes people can get caught up in thinking they've got to go somewhere else to be able to prosper. But if you're where God has you, where he wants you, you're going to be blessed. It doesn't yeah. matter. That's the whole point. It doesn't matter. If he tells you to go, you better go though. Right. You better go. If he right. tells you to stay, you better stay. And that reminds me of Isaac, uh, of Genesis, Genesis chapter 26, there was a famine in the land. And everybody was running, it said, to Egypt. And Egypt represents the world. Everybody was fleeing to the city. You know, they were trying to go so they could get provision or whatever. And God told Isaac, he said, stay put. <laughs> he said, don't go down there. He said, stay put. And the next thing he told him, he said, I want you to sow seed. And that don't <laughs> make sense. It's a family. The ground's probably dry, it's broken up. And he said, sow a seed. And so what does he do? Sows a seed. What happened? He reached a hundredfold return. In a time of famine, he reached a hundredfold return. Yes. And it said that the Philistines actually envied him because he became so prosperous. And my point is, you can be blessed wherever you're at. Just make sure you're where God told you to be. And don't do what the rest of the world, don't run here or don't run there. Don't do those things. Do what you're being directed to do by the Holy Spirit. Yes, and he will provide wherever you are at based on what he tells you to do because he knows how to prosper you. Yeah, I don't care how much they raise taxes in California. I don't care any of that stuff they do because if this is where God wants me, I know that we'll have more than enough to be able to take care yes. of whatever the government may do to us. So right. we're not subject to those things. We might have to still pay those things. Yes, we're supposed to pay Caesar, do what's Caesar. Right. But God will provide it for you as long as you're trusting in him. Verse four. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy ground and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind and the flocks of thy sheep. Yeah, and you can, you can this is so deep. I mean, <laughs> we can sit here so, so deep. for 10 I mean, lessons. Think about one thing that comes to mind that I don't even have in our notes is that like with Paul and with Peter 
and of Jesus, the fruit of their bodies. I mean, Jesus spit in the ground on mud and put it in a guy's eyes to <laughs> heal them. I mean, that's the fruit of the body doing something, doing something good. <laughs> now think of that when you're going into a COVID area. The fruit of your body is blessed. <laughs> it's just something you need to meditate on yeah. is having that kind of anointing not being afraid that you're going to catch something, but being filled with faith that you're going to actually loose Amen. power and healing and abundance and goodness. <laughs> I mean, that is a whole different perspective. And like, I don't know a lot of people who operate that way. I mean, there's a lot of big evangelists and preachers. And I mean, just thinking of Benny Hens ministry where he would just, he would lay out like rows of people and just the anointing, but meditating in that. And that's just, that's so much time in the Word, meditating in the Word and allowing the Holy Spirit to work through you on something like that. So will you read that next part as far as the, some of the notes that I have on Blessed Shall Be the Fruit of Your Body by John Gill? Yes, it's John Gill's Exposition of the Bible. Their children, of which they should have many, be healthful, thrive, and arrive to manhood, <laughs> like that, and increase and perpetuate their families. Amen, that's so good. I like that it arrived to manhood. You know, right? A boy's supposed to be a man. Yeah. He's not supposed to be a girl. He's supposed to grow up. He's supposed to be a man. He's supposed to be a man. Amen. Amen. God's intention. So fruit of your grounds can be gardens, orchards, fields, business, your job, your career. Right. And then the fruit of the cattle, the increase of thy kind, the flocks of sheep, you will be, ex will be extremely productive in all that you do. I love that. I mean, everything. I mean, every single thing that you're going to do, you're going to be prosperous because of the blessing that's on your life. It reminds me of the scripture that everything my hands touch prospers. You just look at them. Everything my hands touch prospers. Sometimes you got to tell yourself that a thousand times a day just to get it on the inside of you. Amen. And I know you can think it, but sometimes you just need to meditate on it and look at your hands, speak to your hands, speak to your children, pray over your children, over your kind and your flocks and your household and your businesses. Speak over it. Pray in tongues over it. If you don't speak in the Holy Spirit, then Stay afterwards, we'll get you filled in speaking in tongues. But just to pray over the increase, you, you will increase, you will increase. Just having that, you know, power going out and blessing and increasing. And again, you want what we got, <laughs> the Spirit of God. So before we move on to all of the rest, we're going to end it here and say tune in next time so we can finish our list, the blessings of Abraham. Amen, you're not going to want to miss it. You are not going to want to miss it. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,